oblique triangles, all three sides known, and determining area. This triangle is different from the other examples we've looked at because I don't know any of the angles. Instead, I know the lengths of the three sides. And what I need to do is determine how big each of the angles is. Since I don't know any of the angles, I won't be able to set up the ratio necessary to use the law of sines. I don't know angle A, so I can't set up a ratio between angle A and side A. Instead, I'll have to use the law of cosines. We're going to start with the angle A, and since we don't know any angles, we can't set up the ratio necessary to find the sine, so I can't possibly do the law of sines. I'm going to have to do the law of cosines. And as a reminder, the law of cosines can be used in triangles just like this. And the law of cosines says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of their included angle. In this case, the cosine of angle A. In this case, A is 9, so I have 9 squared equals b squared. b is 11, so I'll have 11 squared plus c squared. c is 10, so I'll have 10 squared minus 2 times b times c or 2 times 11 times 10 times the cosine of the included angle, which I don't know, so I have to just say the cosine of A. Now in this equation, I'm wanting to solve for A. So I'm going to have to do some algebra and solve this equation for A. I'm going to start by simplifying my numbers, and I'll have 81 equals 121 plus 100 minus 2 times 11 times 10, which is 110, cosine A. If I go a little bit further, I have 81 equals 221 minus 220 cosine A. I can see that my problem is getting a little bit easier. Since this is the variable that I'm solving for, I want to get rid of things that are added to it first, so I'm going to subtract 221 from both sides of the equation. And I'll have negative 140 is equal to negative 220 cosine of angle A. Now I know I need to divide both of these sides of the equation by negative 220, so I'll have negative 140 over negative 220 is equal to cosine A. Even though this is a lot of work, it just reviews the algebra skills that you've learned in previous lessons in this particular series. So I've got cosine A is equal to negative 140 over negative 220. I know that if I have a negative divided by a negative, those are both positive. You can reduce this fraction if you want to, but you don't really need to as long as you're going to use your calculator. This is as far as I can go without a calculator. So I'm going to cross over, I'm going to do this division, and then take the inverse cosine to find angle A. On the calculator, I'm going to take 140 divided by 220, and I'm going to make sure that I hit the equals key before I go any further. So I have that the fraction 140 divided by 220 is equal to 0.636363. Now I want to find the inverse cosine, so I'm going to ask, access the second function and the cosine, and I find that it's equal to 50.4788 degrees. So my angle A is equal to 50.4788 degrees. Now, once again, we probably don't want to leave this in decimal form. We want to change it to degrees, minutes, seconds. So coming back to my calculator, I've still got this number in here. I'm just going to access the degree, minutes, seconds button by hitting the second key and degrees, minutes, seconds. And I see that it's 50 degrees, 28 minutes, and 43 seconds, which I'll round off to 50 degrees and 29 minutes. So this is about equal to 50 degrees and 29 minutes. Now I've used this law of cosines effectively to find angle A. So I have one of my missing angles taken care of. I have a choice now. I can use either the law of sines or the law of cosines to find the remaining angles. We haven't had much pro uh, practice with the law of cosines, so I think we'll do the law of cosines again to help us find angle B just for the practice. So in the second part of this, I want to find angle B. And I'm going to use another form of the law of cosines, and that is b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. And angle b is the one that I want to find. In this case, b squared is 11 squared, a is 9, so I'll have 9 squared, c squared would be 10 squared, minus 2 times 9 times 10 times the cosine of b. And once again, I'm going to have to use my algebra skills to help me solve this particular problem. I have 121 equals 81 plus 100 minus 180 
cosine b. I'm just simplifying the math in here a little bit. I have 121 equals 181 minus 180 cosine b. And I know on this equation to get b isolated, I have to get rid of things that are added or subtracted from it first. So I'm going to subtract 181 from both sides and I'll get negative 60 is equal to negative 180 cosine b. To complete my equation for cosine b, I need to divide both sides by negative 180. So I'll have negative 60 over negative 180 is equal to cosine b. Again, I have a negative over a negative, and so I know that they should be positive. And that's going to help me to find cosine b when I cross to my calculator. Crossing to my calculator, I'll take 60 divided by 180 equals 0.333. That decimal does not represent the angle. That represents the cosine of angle B. So to find angle B, I'm going to have to hit the second key and cosine, and I get 70.5288 degrees. So I have 70.5288 degrees is equal to angle B. I probably don't want to leave that as a decimal. I want to change it to degrees, minutes, seconds. So I will access the degree, minutes, second button and I get 70 degrees, 31 minutes, and 43 seconds, which I'll round off to 70 degrees and 32 minutes. Now I have found, using the law of cosines, angle A and angle B, and I need to find angle C as well. I could use the law of cosines again if I want, or I could use the law of sines, but probably an easier thing to do is just to remember that all three angles of a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. So I know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C need to total 180 degrees. Angle A is 50 degrees and 29 minutes. And angle B is 70 degrees and 32 minutes. And I want to know angle C. I know that they need to total 180. If I add these two angles together, I get 121 degrees and one minute. And if I want to do this on my calculator, I can, or I can just subtract. If I just subtract, I'm going to find that C is equal to 58 degrees and 59 minutes. Therefore, using the law of cosines, I was able to find two of the missing angles. And by using what I know about angles in a triangle, I was able to find the third angle. Again, a combination of problem-solving strategies helps me with these particular kinds of problems. Usually when you want to find the area of a triangle, you have to take one half the height times the base. But that's assuming that you know the height and the base. In this case, I might know the base, but I certainly don't know the altitude to the base. So I have to rely on another formula. And it's the formula for area that we use with oblique triangles. The formula for area looks like this. We're going to multiply two sides together, A times B, times the side of the included angle, sine of C, all divided by 2. So our area formula looks almost like the area formula when you know the height. I have two things multiplied together divided by 2, but I have to remember to multiply by the sine of the included angle. So in this case, in our, in our previous exploration, we found that angle C was equal to 58 degrees and 59 minutes. We already have that information, and we already have the information that A and B are 9 and 11. So if I want to find the area of this triangle, I'm going to multiply A times B, or 9 times 11 times the sine of the included angle. That would be the sine of angle C. And I know that angle C is 58 degrees and 59 minutes. And I'm going to divide that entire product by 2. I can do this on the calculator. So I'll cross over to my calculator, make sure it's cleared, and take 9 times 11 times the sine of the included angle. We're going to use our keys up here to their best advantage. We'll say 58.59 and we'll convert it to decimal degrees and we'll take the sine of that number and we'll divide the whole thing by 2. And we find that the area is 42.4224. So the area of this triangle is 42.4224. Now remember we always label area in square units these are inches, so I will label it in square inches. This formula is going to help you to find the area of any oblique triangle. You'll multiply two sides together times the sine of the included angle, all divided by two, and that will enable you to find the area of any triangle, whether you know the altitude or not.
Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.